Ronaldo. Oh, genius! Absolute genius! Take a look at this photo of the Portuguese soccer team. It's a pretty diverse group. We're used to seeing players with ancestry from Portugal's former colonies, like Cape Verde of Brazil, and other immigrant backgrounds representing the country in tournaments like the World Cup and European Championship. Immigration is nothing new for Portugal. Over the past decade, the number of foreigners living in Portugal has almost doubled, between around 800,000 today. Many of them come from Brazil, Africa, and Eastern Europe, and they become key cogs in the wheel of Portugal's economy, contributing over 1.6 billion euros just last year. But recently, like in much of Europe, things have been changing. Like many European countries, Portugal is rethinking its immigration policies, tightening the rules in response to political pressure. And these new policies are set to hit a certain type of high-earning immigrant who can quietly reshape in Portugal. No, we aren't talking about footballers here. Can you guess who it is? It's probably not who you expect. Portugal's declining population has left gaps in key sectors agriculture, tourism, and services. Over the past decade, the foreign-born population has more than doubled, now making up over 16% of the total population. Migrants from Brazil, Nepal, and the Philippines have become essential to Portugal's economic growth, which has outpaced the Eurozone average. Without immigration, experts predict Portugal's population could shrink to just 7 million by 2100. Immigration slowed after the 2008 financial crisis, but rebounded after 2014, thanks to programs like the Golden Visa and the Sephardic Jewish Nationality Act, which granted citizenship to descendants of Jews expelled during the Inquisition. By 2022, Portugal saw a 32% increase in its foreign population, with migrants contributing 1.6 billion to the Portuguese economy playing a critical role in stabilizing the workforce and demographic challenges. Portugal's new immigration rules, though, are about to shake things up. Migrants will now need a secured employment contract before they can move to the country, a big shift that's expected to impact thousands. But who will this affect the most? It's not just low-wage workers. It's going to be the high-earning immigrant we told you about digital nomads. That's right. Your web developer friend logging in online while sipping port by the sea in the Algarve is about to feel the heat too. Previously, digital nomads could enter Portugal without a job contract, pay into social security for a year, and then apply for residency. This system gave them a way to integrate into the economy while enjoying Portugal's lifestyle. But with the manifestation of interest mechanism scrapped, their path to residency just got a whole lot harder. So what happens now? These changes are meant to address Portugal's immigration backlog and tighten border security. But not everyone's on board. Critics warn that this move could leave many migrants, including digital nomads, in limbo, without clear options to stay or work. And while far-right groups are pushing for even stricter policies, digital nomads, who aren't your typical low-wage workers, are already having a big impact on local economies and driving up housing costs. With these new rules in place, Portugal's digital nomad scene could be facing a major shakeup. So what's next for the country's booming remote work community? The influx of high-earning tech migrants has dramatically changed the landscape for the Lisbon's residents, particularly in the rental market. With many digital nomads working for US-based tech companies or venture capital-backed startups, their higher incomes have driven up rent prices, leaving locals struggling to compete. In fact, over the past five years, Rents in Lisbon have surged by nearly 30%, making it more expensive to rent here than in cities like Milan, Madrid, and even Berlin. Critics have been quick to blame foreign workers for Portugal's skyrocketing housing crisis, and Prime Minister Luís Montenegro is cracking down. The government's tightening immigration rules, cutting back on programs like the Golden Visa, and ending the non-habitual residency tax scheme. These policies used to offer foreigners a flat tax rate for up to 10 years, making Portugal a magnet for high-earning expats and investors. The Golden Visa in particular allowed foreign investors to gain residency and even citizenship by buying property worth at least 500,000 euro. This led to a huge surge in foreign property purchases. 
driving up prices and leaving locals struggling to afford homes. In fact, foreign buyers are responsible for nearly 10% of all real estate transactions in the country. By ending these programs, the government hopes to cool down the housing market, curb foreign speculation, and make housing more accessible for Portuguese residents. But will it be enough to solve the country's growing affordability crisis? At the heart of this issue is the widening income disparity between locals and the new arrivals. With Portugal's minimum wage at 820 euro a month and 50% of locals earning less than 1,000 a month, special visa granted to digital nomads requiring them to earn at least 2,800 euro a month has only widened the gap. Rents in Lisbon have surged by nearly 30% in the last five years, making it one of the most expensive cities in Europe, while nearly half of the population struggles to keep up. This has led to fierce competition for housing, pricing many local residents out of their own neighborhoods. According to a recent study by Statistics Portugal, more than 250,000 working age adults, or 5% of the population, are now holding down two or even three jobs just to make ends meet. Portugal isn't just tightening immigration laws for digital nomads. It's also cracking down on laws regarding accommodation more widely, which will have knock-on effects for said remote workers. With housing prices skyrocketing in cities like Lisbon, the government is introducing new laws to cool down the overheated market and make it easier for locals to find affordable housing. Now, the Portuguese government is cracking down on Airbnbs and other short-term holiday lets. Former Prime Minister Antonio Costa recently announced a raft of measures designed to address the housing crisis. One of the most significant changes is a freeze on new licenses for Airbnbs in urban areas under housing pressure, like Lisbon, Porto and the Algarve. Only rural regions will be exempt from these new restrictions as the government aims to free up more housing for local residents. These new regulations come as Portugal faces one of its worst housing shortages in recent memory. According to the 2021 census, more than 720,000 housing units across the country are vacant, with an estimated 15% of homes in Lisbon sitting empty. To tackle this, the government is also incentivizing landlords to convert short-term holiday lets into long-term rental properties. Airbnb owners, for example, will be offered tax breaks if they make the switch. In October 2023, the Portuguese government rolled out the Mais Habitação program to tackle the housing crisis. The goal? To increase long-term rentals by cracking down on short-term Airbnbs. While it's added more rental properties to the market, prices are still sky high, leaving affordable housing a distant dream for many locals still. So what does the future hold for this? former digital nomad paradise. Remote work has opened up a world of possibilities for millions, promising a life of flexibility and freedom in sun-drenched destinations. Since the pandemic, the rise of location-independent work has led to an explosion in digital nomadism. According to a study by MBO Partners, 16.9 million Americans now identify as digital nomads a staggering 131% increase since 2019. The trend has only been accelerated by the global cost of living crisis and the introduction of digital nomad visas, making it easier than ever to work remotely from anywhere worldwide, with Lisbon proving to be a favorite destination. So what's the big picture? Portugal, like much of Europe, is facing a demographic crisis with an aging population and declining birth rates. Immigration helps fill crucial labor gaps and keep the economy growing, whether it's workers from Brazil, Nepal or the Philippines, or even descendants of Sephardic Jews returning to the citizenship program. Immigrants are currently needed to keep things running. Remote work has unlocked new possibilities, with digital nomads flocking to places like Portugal for the sun, affordability and flexibility. But behind the Instagram perfect images of working from beaches and cafes is a more complicated story. Portugal, like much of Europe, has been grappling with a declining population and relies heavily on immigration to keep its economy afloat. In recent years, programs like the Golden Visa and Digital Nomad Visas have drawn wealthy foreigners. But at the same time, they've driven up living costs and deepened the housing crisis for locals. Given that remote workers working for foreign companies aren't needed for work in hospitals, agriculture, or any other critical industry, while making things less affordable for the locals, the 
the government is increasingly asking how needed this type of immigrant is for the Portuguese economy. And while foreign money has helped boost the economy, it's also created these new challenges. As more immigrants and nomads move in, young Portuguese workers are finding it harder to afford housing, pushing many to leave the country in search of better opportunities abroad, becoming immigrants themselves. So Portugal's future is complicated. It needs immigration and foreign money to keep its economic machine powered up, but the balance isn't easy. Rising costs and housing prices are real problems that can't be ignored. The question is, how will Portugal continue to welcome newcomers while making sure it's still affordable for the people who call it home?